Hello everyone, Justin DeLay from Reverb here. You know, one of the things I love about the Reverb community is getting all of your ideas and suggestions and doing my best to help out. On a recent video, one of you asked for us to break down other kinds of synthesis. So today, I thought we would take an opportunity to explore the world of wavetable synthesis. One quick caveat, I will be the first to admit that I am not an expert on wavetable synthesis, so this is going to be a fun opportunity for all of us to learn something together. So a bit of history. Wavetable synthesis was originally developed in the 1970s by pioneering companies like PPG and then later on Waldorf, who built some really powerful, very breakthrough hardware wavetable synthesizers. These days, you're more likely to find a wavetable synth as a plug-in or virtual instrument, which is actually a really good format for wavetable synthesis because it facilitates some really exciting and, 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 and helpful ways of visualizing what's happening to the wavetable itself. Some examples of wavetable sounds can be found in the music of Tangerine Dream, as well as Depeche Mode, uh, especially in their 80s song, See You. Also, Thomas Dolby was famous for his use of PPG synths, especially in his track, Wind Power. You can really hear it when the bass kicks in. When it comes to software wavetable synths, Serum and Massive from Native Instruments have proven to be very popular uh, with modern electronic music producers and EDM producers. Uh, Skrillex is a big fan of Massive. And additionally, Ableton actually just put a wavetable synth into Live 10. But today we're going to take a closer look at Arturia's Pigments wavetables. Okay, so what is a wavetable synthesizer? Well, first things first, it's a synthesizer just like anything else. The difference is in the oscillators. Wavetable synthesizers have much more complex and feature-rich oscillators that are the core of the sound, and the, the changing and the modulation and the complexity of your waveforms over time is what gives wavetable synths specifically their unique sound. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so a basic sine wave, no modulation, sounds just like any other sine wave you would get from any other synthesizer. The first cool thing about wavetables is that you can tweak that sine wave in all sorts of ways that really take the oscillator waveforms far beyond the constraints of your classic square waves and triangle waves and saw waves. That's just basic frequency modulation. It's pulling the peaks and valleys of the waveform tighter together, adds to the richness of the sound. Awesome. So what you heard there was a combination of phase modulation, phase distortion, wave folding. It's affecting various aspects of the width of the, the oscillator wave, the peaks and valleys, the shapes, all kinds of stuff. And really what you're trying to do is you're trying to create interesting complex waveforms that then form the basis of your complete synthesizer sound. It's important to note that there are many synthesizers that are uh, subtractive in nature that can do wave shaping. So if you like those sounds, you don't necessarily have to get a wavetable synth. But let's take a look at the table aspect of wave table. So let's go back to a basic sine wave 
and we're going to visualize this. We're going to move away from the 2D waveform view into a 3D wave table view to better understand what's happening here. So you can see here in this wavetable view that there are essentially your four classic oscillator waveforms, sine wave, triangle, saw, and square. They're like layers or slices, if you will. And the most basic thing you can do with a wavetable synthesizer is switch between those different slices over time. So let's just visualize and listen to again what that is. Pretty cool. Rigid switching between those different waveforms, but gives you a good understanding of how we're moving through that wave table. But one thing we've learned from our exploration of synthesizers over time is how powerful using LFOs and other modulators are to basically give you another hand to turn knobs and to change settings over time. So let's take a look at what happens when we apply one of the built-in LFOs to the wavetable position. Okay, so if I click on this plus sign by the position knob, it then allows me to map all of these different modulation sources here to the wavetable position. So in this case, I'm gonna grab LFO1 and I'm gonna turn up the amount that it's modulating the wavetable position. And right away, visually, without even touching anything, we can see that LFO pulsing the wavetable position back and forth. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, maybe not the coolest sound ever, but it starts to form the basis for an evolving sound. When you get into modulating across the table, you can really focus in on a segment of the wavetable all the way up to the full wavetable. So here, I cranked the LFO modulation intensity all the way up so that it will sweep all the way from that sine wave at the very front of the table all the way to the back of the table with that square wave so we can hear that kind of maximum evolution back and forth over time. Again, pretty abrupt, but we're gonna figure out ways to smooth that out. One way to tweak the way that this is evolving over time is with the, the speed of the LFO. So again, you can hear that rigid stepping through. And sometimes that can be cool, and if that's the sound you're going for, step away. Part of the real magic of wavetables is when you gracefully morph the waveform across those variations. So let's click this morph button here and see what that sounds like. Pretty cool. Right away, you hear that stepping is gone and there's kind of a smooth cycling over time. Let's turn that LFO rate back up so we can hear that more quickly. Pretty cool. If you can imagine morphing between a sine wave and a square wave, you can imagine morphing between an endless number of waveforms and wave shapes that really, again, just go far, far beyond the sounds that a classic analog oscillator can create. So now let's take this idea of modulating our position in the wavetable even further. So let's say that we wanted to create a synth sound that starts off with the harmonic richness and bite of a square wave. And then as you hold the sound, it mellows out into a sine wave with a little bit of harmonic variation along the way. How would we do that? Well, we would apply a envelope to our wavetable position. So what I've done here is I tapped into envelope two, which is a freely assignable envelope within pigments, to the wavetable position. And I've set a fairly steep decay curve so that we get through the wavetable pretty quickly. And then additionally, we still have that LFO creating a little bit of harmonic variation over time. What does that sound like? It's 
So what we can hear then is with just a little bit of modulation and really some very basic waveforms, we're already starting to create these big evolving universes of sound, if you will, that can evolve over 10 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe your whole song, depending on how you set it up. Now, as I said, I would be the first to admit that I am not a pro when it comes to programming wavetable synth sounds, so I thought it would be cool to flip through some of the presets that have already been designed by Arturia to really showcase what happens when a wavetable synthesizer gets into the hands of the pros. <laughs> As you can see, wavetable synthesis to me is all about creating unique, evolving sounds over time that really start where classic analog synthesis ends and explores a whole new sonic territory. And for what it's worth, I'm a bit of a nerd about these things, but I love to see how waveforms evolve over time because that's how I learned about synthesis is really seeing what's happening. So even if some of those more far out sounds are not necessarily your cup of tea, even just as a basic synth learning tool, I think wavetable synthesizers are a really, really fun place to dig into. Here with the Arturia pigments, I really like this for a couple of reasons. One, it acts as a standalone application. So you don't necessarily need to even be into DAWs or any of that kind of stuff. You can just install it on your computer, pull it up, and really treat it as if it's just a synthesizer. The other thing that's cool about it is that you can pull it up into a, your DAW of choice. And given how wide the range of sounds that can be produced from pigments are, frankly, you could build a whole track out of just the Arturia Pigments Wavetable Synthesizer. So my producer and the man behind the camera actually took and built a whole track out of multiple instances of pigments. I think this is a really beautiful way of demonstrating the wide range of sounds that you can get from a wavetable synthesizer. So let's take a listen. <laughs> 